So I guess when people think about the biggest brim in Australia, often people think about Tasmania. And this year, ABT and Hobie have teed in together to come to Tasmania. So we've got two weeks straight of fishing, or around about 13 days. But the main coverage is going to be about the ABT rounds at both the Derwent and St Helens. And both of those rounds, it's pretty cool because there's a bunch of people travelling together. So at the Derwent, we're staying with Liam Carruthers and his family, his wife Lauren and his two kids, Wyatt and Jasper. And at St Helens Round, I'm staying with Cromo, his wife Danny, and their child, Alvi. There's a couple of other people along the way as well. So you'll meet Jared, who is a WA fisher, and he's my guaranteed non boater So he's flying in, he's sharing some of the accommodation costs with me, and we're staying together for the two events. And this trip's really important to me because often the things that get missed in the fishing space is what goes on behind the scenes, the community, the dinners, the families that come along fishing. And on one side of the house, yeah, sure, you've got the tournament space where everyone is trying to catch the biggest fish that they can and break down the system and that's always fun that competition aspect but I think the bigger attraction to many people is the community behind that and this next week or so we are definitely going to see that. I literally started my comp again at about 11.45. I pulled up to that same deep spot. That was chaos. That was proper <laughs> chaos. Right. Oh, shaking. I am shaking. Booyah. Felt like they were just looking for shade, you know, especially at the bridge on the pylons and stuff. We're going to turn and burn as soon as this is done, dude. Yeah. Be ready for me. Uh, I was lucky enough to meet Brett when I used to work in a table shop in Wakes. Once he get his head up, just go. All right, first place. We've had it, well, the first time I was here, I found two packs and I could see them and I couldn't get them to bite. Yeah. That's the first time I've ever seen it. I'll, I'll never forget it. And the same thing sort of happened last time I was here as well, but the two packs and I was chucking things at them and they were just sort of spooking. So I was like, mate, they're just too good. You know, you could tell they're good fish. I sort of rounded, rounded one pack up and come around it and I'd schooled them, not schooled them, but sort of cattle dog them. Mm. back into each other. I don't know, I cast, I think I just had a bit of a prospector, but between the two, and all of a sudden the two packs just come together, in on the bait, and just flipped it up in the air. They were fighting, mate. They were just into it. They, were, they didn't, I don't think they, think they cared about lure. They were just belting each other. And the lure sat there just getting flicked about, and I'm like, oh, someone eat it, someone eat it. And they were just blueing, and then they separated, and then one of the smaller ones just came out, ate a lure, took off, and that was Big Brim. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that, I, I can't remember if it was Big Brim in the comp, that's the biggest one that I, I weighed in the bag. I ended up bagging out and caught day one, I had one fish, I think, maybe, might have even donutted. Yeah. And then day two, weighed one of the heaviest bags, if not, if not the heaviest bag of the comp, and come back, and I was like, I think I ended up fourth or fifth or somewhere, you know, or somewhere yeah. in the top ten, you know. Why did you move from a cash boat? I fell out of love with bass boats, to be honest. I fell out of love with the amount of work that you've got to do to keep a bass boat to where it's meant to be. And I don't have time for it anymore. I, don't, I, don't, I, I stopped enjoying the amount of bits and pieces you had to do to stay on top of it. So basically, for a long time, I'd been looking, and Kaimi had been looking as well, we'd been looking for five <laughs> to six metre boat, open, and we're gonna do a tiller. I wanted to do a tiller. 200 tiller steer, um, completely open boat, and you know, try and maybe put a bimney at the back. And I'd looked at, um, I'd looked at a white pointer, the uh, the super hornet that he does, 
and that was a good hole for it, but it was 20 grand just for the hole with nothing in it, like bare, absolutely nothing in it. And I'm like, I didn't see the value in that. And I thought there's gonna be a lot of work I'm gonna to have to do to it myself. I want a little bit more plushness. And I was sort of starting to get to the stage there also with all the tournaments that we were doing. At that current time, I still had a, a Ranger. I was starting to get to the stage where I was getting sick of my shit, getting bashed to pieces and spray just hitting the side of my eye when I'm just pulling up on a flat. Like it's a very small thing, but it was like Japanese water torture to me. Like constantly just getting that little bit of spray and having to clean my glasses and <laughs> I don't know, it's a small little thing and I was over it. And I'm just like, I want a windscreen. <laughs> I want a decent windscreen that I can just sit behind and you know, if I want to have something to eat while I'm going flat out, I can do that and it's not going to blow out of my hand or anything like that. So what have you got now? What is so this is a 5.6 metre X Rider from Revival. Um, we've marked, matched it up with a 150 Pro XS XL. Um, the, just the extra length, 25 inch. Um, I've got uh, I've got the Ghost on the front, the dual power poles, which I don't think I'd ever own a boat without power poles anymore. Once you've had dual poles, you just like, and you know what, I even went back to eight foot. It was the worst thing I ever did. I, I missed the 10 foot. Um, for, for what I do, uh, for I fish a lot of sort of two and a half meters, two meters, a lot of the flats that I fish, and the eight foot just wouldn't hold me there, right? The 10 foot, I've never had a problem, you know, you, you sort of, yeah, you'd rather be looking at it than looking for it, so. The brackets I've put on, with, I actually did it through Lenny. He, he hooked me up with the guys at Hydrilla in the States. We got removable brackets, so you can fold them down or you can completely take them off. And we put uh, the hydraulic disconnectors that you can get through power pole. So I don't, I'm not sure that the other companies do that, but now I can completely remove my power poles off the boat if I want to go out white. And it's simple, hey, just click, click, done, power poles are off. So, um, and I set that up so I can take it out wide and go and do a bit of trolling for marlin or, or whatever you want, you know, or, or take it out for a bit of, bit of snapper where you don't need the, the poles out the back. I can put a bait board on the back and put a barbie out there and, bash, you know, you sorry? You can bottom bash, you can throw... Whatever you want. Like, you know, I'm not, yeah, I, I, I'm not, um, I wasn't keen on the idea of having to have two boats. I don't have the room for it at home. So I wanted something that would do as close as I could, as close as I could get to being able to do everything. On the pre-fish day, I went through, I think I went through about 20 litres, 23 litres. Um, on the comp day, oh, look at the bait here. On the first comp day, I went through like, I think it was 19. And then on the second day, I'd sort of got to the stage where I could open it up a bit more because I was through my run time. And I used 24 litres again. So, um, a total of about sort of 70 litres over the three days. And I did a lot, I went as far as you can go, well, well not as far as you can go, but right up to the end bridge and I got around, hey, like I was, I was not. I was doing 70 litres a day. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I did 100 litres on the last day. <laughs> Ouch, yeah. yeah, that's, that's costly. But <laughs> I guess, and that was definitely, look, we, we, we looked at, because this boat's rated to a 175, yeah. and I looked at re-rating it to a 200, to put a 200 on the back. It was gonna cost me, I think, probably about another eight grand for the engine. Um, and then when the fuel prices reached, like I think it was a dollar 70, and it was predicted to keep going, I just went, oh, it's, it's not worth it to me. And I'm glad I didn't, because the back of the boat would probably be a little bit lower than it is now. And I'm, I'm only drawing 300 mil of water, 350 mil of water at best. That's good. So it goes right into shallow. It, it, you know what, to be brutally honest, this draws less water than my Ranger did. Really? Believe it or not. Well, this, is, this is a boat for a, a cod fisherman, a trout fisherman, a snapper fisherman, a family that wants to go skiing, a family that l would like the idea of dabbling into a tournament, but probably uh, is unsure about it. But dad wants the opportunity. Um, it's it's a it's a it's it, it's a far easier boat to sell than a bass boat. Far easier boat to sell. Pretty obvious what that is. <laughs> oh yeah. So do you, do you have a rough plan? I do. So what I'm going to do, 
I'm pretty much going to go and hit structure first up and I'm going to try and flog the crap out of it and just hit every bit of structure that I can because I know you only get that one chance a couple of hours in the morning on the first day. Blast it. Hit what I can and just because once it's done, it's done. The fish are off it and they won't come back for it for day two either. It'll just, it'll shut it out. So I'll try and just hit whatever I can first and then, uh, then I'll aim to fish. A couple of flats that I've, I've previously done good on and um, then sort of wait for the afternoon. The afternoon is where I'm, I'm is what I'm most looking forward to. Um, I'll just sort of potter around and, and play it by feel, work out what the wind conditions are doing and um, just pay attention to what's going on around me. You know, I, I do that a bit more now. I never I never used to, I always used to have spots lined up and I'm having them written down and I'm going to hit this and I'm going to do that for 10 minutes. And, uh, I wore myself out doing it and you're just like, I ain't really. I love the tournaments. I still want to win a tournament. I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a think of it anymore, I guess. For me now, it's more just about getting out on the weekend away from work. And I was gonna remember, man, I haven't been able to fish tournaments properly for two years because of lockdowns and all that crap, you know? Um, so being able to just come and, and do the events and be here and enjoy it and see the weigh-ins, see the families around watching, what it's so important seeing all that. Like, I don't know, I just, I just love the entire, the entire scenario and I, I wanna be a part of it every single time. Yeah, I wanna win, but I don't, I just it's not the be all and end all of it. It's the, it's the whole entire package for me. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. For sure. All right. Part of me's happy I didn't get that fish. Do you want to take off now? What do you think? Yeah. It's tough fishing, man. It's a tough fishery, eh? Everything looks awesome. The derwent, they're generally um, you want the current, more run, more fun, you know. Here it's it's the backs, it's the corners, it's the bits where they're out of it and the bait are a little bit disorientated. You'll see the boys fish in the current zones, but it'll be a window of about 10 minutes. They'll come on and feed and that's it. But you kind of already need to know that. To work 10 minutes on comp day in the right spot, that's a that's like winning the lotto. So. Yeah, it's a big gamble. Yeah, right? it's a fluke. It is a fluke. Like, Look at all that fishing line wrapped around the engine. What have you guys been doing? No leader popping out. That was you yesterday. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh, on that cranker crab. The reach around. Yeah. Did you like that? You jealous now? I'll get some later. <laughs> Will you now? <laughs> Do you fish down the front in the morning and then come up to the flats in the afternoon? Yeah, that's right. So do you, so the time's now what? 9.30. What time is high tide? Ten, uh, 12.50. All right, so at about 10.30. I want to hit something else. Keep you guys punch right up into the back there, hey. That's where, we're, that's where I'm going to go, I'll show you. I'll show you where the tide's up, right? I just want to go to it later. That is ridiculous, look at him. Awesome. You have to pull, that's a trev. It's a green trev. Oh no. <laughs> I cannot believe that just happened. <laughs> Look at the ears. Not even a scratch on the leader. Really? He went straight through underneath. Yeah? How good is that? Yeah, no. I'm going to go out the front, see what's going on. Yeah, I had a look at the front earlier. Crystal clear? Oh, it's so clear, but yeah. you just needed heaps more water. It's just not enough water anyway. How are you going? You caught any yet? We've got one. Yeah, how come I go this morning? Get any? Uh, no. Um, we had one big follow on, on like a weedy flat. <laughs> That's all they do though when the water's up. You'd be looking at this going, this is sick, except they don't eat. <laughs> yeah, no, they don't. <laughs> yeah, we just got a random one. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I did last time. Mutant. Down exactly where you were there on that back end bay. That's where I got like a couple of randos that would follow the grub. Yeah. And then 
wait for all this shit to flood and then just throw a jerk bait. Along here was my, me last year. Like My primary spot this weekend is like along here and yeah. into that back corner. I'll be on the opposite side here and we'll be eyeballing each other because I'll be over there. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the front and just like f around in these racks, I reckon, to see if I can get some nice flow through there. I can't fish the rack at the front, man. I, it's all weed. Yeah. I just don't know how to fish them. You just gotta go over the top, like aquas and like jerk baits. Yeah, yeah, you can throw hard body bottom, but That's how I did it last year, hard loops. And I think I, I got like four of my five. Yeah, just going down the goalpost and just cranking them. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, the, the fish actually came a little bit closer than what you expect because they, they don't get the picture of the, the boat until they're coming yeah. out of the weed. Yeah. And when they're coming out of the weed, they're already committed to the lure. You need more water, probably in the next hour or so to have enough water. When I was there this morning, it wasn't enough water. Is this your first time at St. Helens, Jared? Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, it's different, eh? It looks epic. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go. Love you. Hi. We've seen fish on the um. event of our 2022 Daiwa Broom Series. Um, again, always a huge thank you to Daiwa for getting behind the event. Alrighty, so let's kick off. Um, boat number one heading out is our Lister fishing with Lindsay Pryke tomorrow. Boat 10 is Byron Hill with Andrew Lavelle. Now what we have here is Byron Hill in his natural element. <laughs> <laughs> Such a happy boy. Is a... <laughs> Thanks dad. <laughs> Who said it was high tide at 9? 9.50 I can't find anywhere that says that Yeah, we've got the same map Mine says 11.30 Different day? You're looking at Saturday 19th of March uh, Hey, 19th of March What if you say? What's today? 21st. 21st Go forward <laughs> There you go What time? 11.30 <laughs> so prefish today had its problems and I think tomorrow we are going to be burning a fair amount of fuel to find the fish. Jared and I saw them all scattered around the arena and tomorrow I'm going to be jumping around from spot to spot to try and find the fish that we saw today and see if I can get at least a few of them to bite them. I, honestly I think if you miss that bite window tomorrow uh, you're going to come home with a partial bag, you're not going to feel your limit at all. So tomorrow morning we'll launch the boat, we'll collect our non-boater, get our key, key tag and get checked out, and we'll launch mid-morning key tag 10. I know a lot of the feel are going to stop on the flat on the way up there, but I'm going to go straight past that and hit a gutter that's on the other side of the flat. It's got this creek that flows out onto the flat, and I'm hoping that I can pick up a morning fish or two while it has its feed. From there I'm going to have to time it well, but I want to push up to the front, I want to be the first up the front at a particular spot, but there is a little bit of risk with getting in there, I've got to get in there on pad, I can't motor the boat in. Jared and I saw some seriously big fish in that little area today, so hopefully we can grab a fish or two and start to build a sizeable bag there tomorrow. side of the flat, I'll probably hit the front side of the flat and just wait for that water to come into the system. And then I'll make a move into the system and hit another couple of flats. Heck, 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 heck. 
that's fine. Thank you. That is number five. At some stage as well, I want to go up to that primary spot today and see if I can get some fish up in the real shallows, but uh, that's going to be a little bit complex, so we'll see uh, that. Right. There'll be a lot of winging it tomorrow. There'll be a lot of following the wind and just seeing where the water's at at certain times. And it's a good upgrade, isn't it? Hopefully we can throw some jerk baits and some soft plastics and, uh, and get some fish. But, but you know, the conditions are tough, and I think if you can fill your limit, that's 10 fish over the two days, I think you've got a pretty good shot at the top 10. One, two, three, four, five. But I don't think you got 4.6 to take the lead. No, you're, definitely you're not. You're not out of it. One, two, three, four, five for Byron. They're going to go. High threes, 3.97. Haven't got a 1.3 in there? No, nah, definitely not. All right, well done, mate. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We'll see you up here tomorrow. Thank you. You've got one fish there for Martin. Thank you. Don't help. They're in there. Don't help. Can we come up with that? Weighs up at 770 grams, mate. Three of those tomorrow, you'll be doing well. Let's get it for a look. All right, next up we have Mark Crompton. Weighing in a sack of fish and a small child. You have five fish, Mark? Yeah. Fishing out of his new boat, which I affectionately call the family truckster. And that it is, is a family whoa, truckster, mate. It is. That is a good bag of fish, it's, mate. A, it's the mother truckster. The mother truckster, all right. You got five, and there is not one small one in there. Nah, there's a good one. We might go for big green. We'll have all a look. All right. I reckon this might be our first five kilo bag of the afternoon. I reckon she might nudge it. Just quietly. Just quietly. There, there we go. go. 5.38 kilos. Mark Crompton yeah. takes the lead. In the dial we're bringing Yay. series round. How did Dad go? All right. Mom? Mom. All right. Let's try one for big brim. One, four, seven. There you go. We've gone up by 100 grams now, mate. Well done. We leading That's the event real. and leading the... Uh... Oh, fishies. There we go. Beauty. Good on you. Mate. Well done, Alvin. Had the drone up today. Did you see all the sharks around the boat? Yeah. yeah. You could see them? Oh, I don't know if you, they're going to come out. Right. But... Yeah, right. I saw oh, it. Yeah, there was two of them circling the boat. Did any of them go your fish? Hey? Did any of them go your fish? No, no, they're just coming. That, that would have been, yeah, this side's better. Yeah. Alright, come around. There you go, alright, it's over. Oh, honestly, mate, I just fluked a couple of fish here. And then we went and uh, went down the front because I was waiting on that tide change. That's the better one anyway. You wanted the second one. If you get one two spots, the second one's always the biggest. There we go. That's a start to the day. Dropped one early in the morning. Mm. That was my first fish that I'd hooked. That's probably one of my better fish of the day too. Dropped that and I'm just like, oh well, fuck. It's tazzy. You know, that's yeah. it. Then next cast got one. Yeah. And then um, Nonny got one. Um, Pretty much straight away then to... Tell me about the big fish. Um, well, you, you, I don't know if you saw it or not, but it was, wasn't I, far I from... I heard it. Yeah, it wasn't far from out here. Yeah. We're talking. Well, there's no angling to it. I was just messing around, talking and bang. Oh. Yeah, oh, whoa, 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 that was all right. And then not long after it got another one. Woo! There you go, Morgo. Hopefully that makes your... Uh, little snippets that should work oh, that's cool would you get it on i'll tell you tomorrow oh. <laughs> you'll see i'm about to go through, the, to go through this footage <laughs> <laughs> well i've got drone shots of your location all i need to know is what you've got it on now <laughs> oh good <laughs> no i mean I'm it's you know, it's one of those things. I was, I, I just do what I do at home, mate. I was kind of weedy where you were though. Like, it looked like a channel, yeah. like a sand, a dirt channel. I fish, always fish with duros. Yeah. Just um, oh, I try to. You see all the weed in this joint, and you know the fish are cruising about amongst it. You just count them out. You just make sure that the lure doesn't touch a weed, and it's not on the surface. So you just count it out. And you just work out where you are in that water column of a meter. You just count out your lure. It's the same, I, I, I tried to explain it on that um, that Daiwa video that time that I think Braden had done. Yeah, yeah, just count them out, mate. Like, it's not rocket science, you just sort of work out your depth, figure out your depth in front of you, cast to it, 
and just count it out and just try not to touch the bottom, not to touch the surface. And then when it gets to your count, you just flick it up, work it back to you. Yeah, it's all dependent on what you Pretty much, mate. Right? That's it. It's good enough for you. Do you like That's product placement. Is right that there. too much? Is that too much product placement right there, Baron? <laughs> <laughs> Do I just keep winding it up? <laughs> I've got about 40 metres of bloody water on here now. Thanks for that. <laughs> too funny. What did you say? Did you say hello, Morgo? Hello, Morgo. <laughs> All right, Liam, how, how are you going, Dad? Have you got five for us? Yeah, mate, I, I ground pretty hard to get, get five. I've got the fifth with about ten minutes to go. No, so. That's right. You take the fifth one like that, mate. Yeah. Five fish for Liam Carruthers. And a uh, decent bag, although there's been some cracking bags come in the Sabo, including that five-and-a-half-kilo yeah, bag I, nearly from Cromo. That happened behind me, so it's good to watch. 3.86. <laughs> it, it's better if it happens in front of you because you think, well, you've got an excuse there, don't you? Well, you think you've got a chance if it happens in front of you, not behind you. <laughs> All right, and... Uh, Tell, tell Dad, catch more tomorrow. Catch more tomorrow. Thank you. He's good on the mic, isn't he? <clears throat> so I'm pretty excited about the morning. I am sitting 11th after yesterday, so I'm pretty excited about that. Wasn't really expecting 11th, and the bag that I got was a pretty average bag. A lot of that fish that looked like 33 to the fork kind of uh, fish. Today the plan is going to be something very similar to yesterday, but um, it took me a while to work out that the fish were on plastic, so we're going to throw the motor or grub around just a little bit more. I'll rig a 1 12th and a 1, let's say 16th jig head for a little bit shallower stuff and work some drop-offs in the morning. And then after we work some drop-offs, I'll then probably look at uh, jerk baiting. No doubt I'll probably do both at the same time, uh, but you know, yesterday the fish came sporadically. One was on one flat, one was on another flat somewhere else. The third fish was deep, and then I guess from the patch of fish that I found later in the day were all kind of shallow on that motor oil grub. So if I can replicate that at that patch, expect me to go there at some point. And obviously at the end of the day, we got really dusted at the front of the system now. To add in a little bit of variability today, we're taking off at 10 a.m. A little bit different and landing back here or back at the weigh-in at 5.20. And the reason for that late weigh-in has got a lot to do with the tide. <clears throat> the tide or this system seems to be really dependent on, or the fishing seems to be really dependent on the time. So fingers crossed today we can grind it out and then put another five fish bag together. Oh! <laughs> 